Ryan, one of the rare movies that we didn't get to screen early, uh, amazingly, Blue Beetle. Oh, yeah, last, yeah we, both, we both went to see it. But we both went to see it. Uh, the last or first movie of the DCEU or DCU, depending on who you ask. Um, going in, I would have said this is the last film of the old DCEU. Uh, but apparently, leading up, people were claiming that this is actually the first DCU movie, which I find hard to believe because it was in wow. long before Gunn came on board. There is a very credible angle, though. Um, there is a TV series that Blue Beetle uh, fits into that's, that they're putting together. Um, oh. So it may be not a movie that he continues in, but there there is some thought that, that there is a, a, an obvious space to put him should they choose to. Um, right. And the irony here being they can go either way, really, with this one because, uh, you know, get it right out of the way. There's no real connections to other films in this. So this this is either, this could be a standalone on its own and do whatever it wants, or it could be part of something bigger, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be part of anything, and that's kind of refreshing. Yeah, well, let's let's be clear. The the same argument could be made about Black Adam, uh, despite the well, cameo. Well, well, yes. If you take away the cameo, right. Well, even with if, the cameo. Anyway, yes. so let's so let's talk about Blue Beetle. A not an A list superhero. No. Um, a, a a hero that has had many incarnations in the DC comics world. Um. This incarnation is uh, Jaime Reyes, uh, a resident of uh, Palmyra City in what, the East Keys in Florida? Yeah, looks like it, yeah. Um, it keeps saying the East Keys. Um, yeah. A college graduate, can't find a job. Uh, happenstance uh, puts him in a position to where th- this happens to him. Um, I didn't. I'm not a Blue Beetle guy. Yeah, I don't. I don't know anything about. So, it really. so I yeah. So it was it, it, again. It, the, the biggest problem I had coming into this film was is it or isn't it cinematically pertinent? That was my big question going in, um, in terms of a larger DC thing. Uh, so I I you know it, it's nice I got to judge this movie as a movie, not as a part of something per se i had to look at it as a as this thing that's just there um and i surprisingly well first let me uh quick shout out to jeff at uh larry yeah. h miller megaplex for hooking me up uh to see this on on thursday afternoon uh would uh, thank you thank you jeff appreciate it uh it's kind of short notice he hooked me up got a nice seat had a snack and got to watch what turns out to be a pretty okay movie. Yeah. Totally. Uh, I, I don't, you saw it a uh, different theater yeah. a little bit after I did uh, yeah. same day, Thursday. What, where were you at going in? What were you expecting helping? Were you anything going in? No, I wasn't really because, uh, well, I want, well, all I, all I really wanted was for it to be enjoyable. I didn't care about it. You know, if there's a sequel or what happens, you right. know, it's, 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 which I wish I could go into, you know, a lot of those movies feeling like, but this one, you know, it was, I was kind of hoping it would be what they made it be, where, where, where it is just kind of this, it's not completely unconnected if they want to connect it to something, but it doesn't have to be connected to something. Um, and I, and I, you know, I, that's kind of the way Marvel built their original universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just happened to work out for them that they could, you know, uh, sort it out pretty quickly and get them all together for the Avengers, you know, within a relatively short amount of time. But, um, yeah, but a lot of films or enough films. Sure. Yes. Quite a few films before. Yes. Where they introduced numerous characters in over the, you know, a few different films. Um, and kind of work them all together and then had them meet up again. But uh, I, you know, I, I, I guess 
I prefer something a little more serious, I guess. I'm, you know, of that ilk. Right. But um, as far as like just kind of a fun summer matinee, I, I don't really have any issues with this. It's 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 a little silly. Um, mm. Well, some some cases really silly, but you know what? <laughs> a lot of superhero movies are if you want to take them that way. And, and the, the one in this tone, the tone of this kind of embraces the silliness a little bit more than some others do. Uh, yeah, that that was one of the things. I th- this is this is more akin to uh, the first Shazam. Yeah. Uh, tonally and even even kind of thematically because much has been made of uh, the fa- uh, the family element mm-hmm. in this film and and really that was a huge part of Shazam yeah you know, there it was kind of this found assembled family through through the foster system and in here it's you know it's the immigrant family experience yeah. but the but the strength of the family is key and then there's a there's a very lighthearted tone as those family units interact with these weird situations that the superhero aspect leads to. So I, I, I found tonally it was, it was closer to Shazam, even, you know, it, it's not black Adam serious. You know, they went no. super dark with that. It's not, uh, you know, it's not even Aquaman because Aquaman tried to be serious with some light moments and it feels like Shazam and Blue Beetle are lighter films with ser- more serious moments, yeah. even though they're, they're never really, really serious. Yeah, I, um, I think the, st- the stakes feel not so high maybe on this one. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe that's not a bad thing. I don't think every superhero movie should be about we save the world or we're all doomed. You know, right. It's, it's a more of a, uh, I, I it's, it's not exactly personal, but, there, you know, it's that element where, you know, if if this goes wrong and this blue beetle doesn't step it up, it doesn't mean the end of the world. It just means that someone else is going to have to come in and clean up the mess. Right. Uh, if someone decides they want to come in and clean up the mess. No. Yeah. And and uh, so, yeah, and, I mean, and it, well, in that regard, this is even a a more focused movie than Shazam was because had Shazam lost that villain. Yes. Would have, you know, theoretically destroyed the world. Well, um, in this one, they have the capabilities, maybe, to, because it's, it's a technology thing. So there's, there's, you, you could argue that there's more at stake than the immediate thing, but I, I still think it feels smaller than. No, it, it is, and, and what's, what's hilarious, and, and I thought about it later, is that this whole movie, uh, they describe, one, the one time they describe the scarab, um, yeah. which they, we still never really figure out where it came from. They mention it, you know, it's alien, and then that's it. That's all we know. Uh, but the the one thing it's it's supposedly some sort of you know world destroying thing, but it's not used that way. It's used in a heroic way, and you never feel like it wants to be anything other than. No, it doesn't seem that defensive. It, 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 well, yeah, not yeah. defensive, I guess, but positive. I don't know. It's it, you're, it's not vindictive. No, and 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 it's weird. I mean, because we get to talk to it. You yeah. know, Jaime gets to talk to it. Uh, uh, Kajida is is the name of the the scarab, the the voice in his head. Um, and in the the other uh, thing I noticed is that this it, it's very hard cinematically, and even in the comics, really, um, powers and appearances and aspects they're gonna overlap. Mm-hmm. You know, they they were stealing from each other early on, Marvel and DC. Um, but just over time, you know, a person that flies is going to do this. A person, you know, the laser eyes, the fire, you know, if someone's wearing a suit, things are going to start to seem repetitive. Yeah. So it's I mean, it, it, so there's the because the voice in the head is sort of Iron Man esque. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also kind of a Spider-Man element to him. Yeah, uh, there's you know uh, obviously the Egyptian sort of, but not alien Egyptian. I guess oh, no, I mean right. it's the ancient alien theory, which is oh, there you go. Fun. I'm not um, saying it was aliens, uh, but it was. But it was. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, no, it is. It is hard to to not you know, and and totally it is sort of closer to. I, well, it's even sillier than Spider-Man for me. 
The first it, Spider-Man, Homecoming, yeah. Yes, it, it feels it feels even sillier than that. Uh, and that's fine. That's, that's that's more of an observation. That's not a, a you know a, a necessarily a bad thing. Uh, no, no, no. And I, well, let's uh, well let's let's be fair too. We had yeah. we we didn't go into Spider-Man: Homecoming cold. We yeah, had no. encountered him before. Correct. So well, where, at well, least we had some. And even more than that, we knew the character. Right. Whereas Blue, this, Blue Beetle's I, not a household name. I have no idea if this is comic book accurate. Right. Um, you know, I know that you know there's a whole world with which starts to feel like Watchmen to me. <laughs> yeah. The, the retro styling. Uh, it's the look more than the, the tone. At, uh, but anyway, um, you know, this is, it's it's just, it's a sort of thing. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty typical uh, superhero film. Uh, you know, person wasn't born of powers, gets powers, has to figure out how to use powers. And mm -hmm. uh, um there, there is a wrinkle in this a little bit in that uh, the family is not always who they seem to be. <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> but hey, look, if you enjoy what you're seeing and hearing on the Visually Stunning Movie Podcast, why not take a second to click subscribe if you're on YouTube. Click follow wherever you're listening to us. Uh, you know, follow us on Twitter at VS Movie Podcast. Same over on Facebook. If you're on uh, Instagram, it's Visually Stunning Movie Podcast. That would be awesome for us. We appreciate you listening. And now let's get back to the show. So, I want the Nana spin off. And they play that want. up pretty much. Uh, I don't know if I could take it. I, I, I think I got another hand up. Yeah. I, no, it's, but I, it, it's just funny because I think the reason why they didn't spend money to screen this for us was because literally they wanted to save money. And I think a lot of us felt like, no, 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 we need to. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think a lot of critics said, no, we need to see this. So we went and saw it. And right. maybe that's a bad, a bad precedent to set. Um, and I don't know that it would be repeated for Aquaman. Or should they not screen Aquaman? I don't know that we would feel the same sort of uh, need to see. Right. Because um, we've kind of been there, done that. And if they don't want to show it to us, fine. Whatever. Right. Um, but, but this, was but this one felt it felt kind of important yeah. to see it. Yes, for for and, and, and important because well, I don't, I can't explain exactly. It's not just because it you know has immigrants and you know uh, Hispanic family or whatever. It, it just felt like this was a film that needed to be seen and either you know and and people get to you know well well let's put it this way, if it's good, critics want to let people know about it because right. Warner Brothers isn't doing a great job. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it's bad, we can just shut up and not say anything um, and it goes away. But I think right. I don't necessarily want this just to go away. I'd like to see this to do, you know, nice numbers at the box office. Uh, I don't know what that is exactly, but I, I, I don't want everyone to be talking about how big of a failure and and whatnot this is. Yeah. I mean, so I, I looked at what the, the 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 number I just found for a budget is 120 million, which for a superhero film is positively anemic of late. Yeah, it's it's 80 to 150 less than a lot of other ones. Right, um, and it, it, they're saying it's going to make about 25 million this weekend. And I love um, that. We'll we'll see. Domestic. Mm. That's that was the number I saw. Um, it's. It it might it might have legs. I don't know that anything really is coming out. Um, that you know Barbie might come you know resurge. I don't know. Uh, but sure. but I don't know that anything new is coming uh, to do this. This one is like you said. Yeah, I, I think it, it it's important because it was important for us to see it. I think because it is such a it's it's such an unknown quantity. And you're right. I don't know that critics would necessarily make it a point to pay and go see it after it opened for like Aquaman 2. Because you're right. We've been there. We've done that. We know that it is connected to the old universe. The only question is, are they, have they been trying to rework it to fit the new universe? Or is it just one of those things that they've spent the money on and it has to go to theaters? And so, so... 
if they don't screen it for us, we can pretty much, I would pretty much guess uh, that it's not trying to go to the new universe. If they screen it for us, I would think that they have hopes to be able to move past that film as they go forward or, you know, and include some aspects of it. Right. Uh, that would be my guess. So it's, it's just, a, it's just a guess, but I, I think that if they don't screen it for us, I think you're right. I don't think a lot of us are just are, are going to rush right out and see it opening day. Just, just to do it. Cause it's not going to matter unless it is so good. It needs to be said, but if it's that good, we, sh- you know, theoretically yeah. we'd be seeing it. It's this weird, mm. They caught me, but again, they're spending a lot more on Aquaman two than they did on Blue Beetle. Yeah, uh, yeah, at least not, at least twice as much. At least twice as much. The, Blue Beetle is probably their ad, going to be their advertising budget uh, for Aquaman yeah. two. I, I don't yeah. think they can get away without with not marketing that. Uh, I think it's too big. They're going to have to market it. Uh, but again, that's a guess. We've got what three, four months for that. Three months. Is it November or December? I think it's December. Well, who knows? Uh, you know, the strike. Oh, that, and that, and that's true. It, it, we might not see it until June. Oh, yeah. That, that, Lord only knows at this point. Uh, you have to bump it with the Marvels. We'll bump the Disney will bump the Marvels again and we'll see how that goes. Um, but no, I, but Blue Beetle, it. It's fun. It's it's it, it's it's pretty family friendly. Actually, I, I think yeah. it, it feels it feels like it's it's aimed at. The younger, you know, it, 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 like, it just feels like the, the Superman films that I saw when I was a kid. It's PG-13, um, but barely? Yeah, I, yeah I, I don't know. I mean, considering, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is there language in it or so? I don't, I don't know. Maybe? Uh, yeah. Nothing that jumps out at you. Yeah. Um, no, but it's, I think this feels more like, you know, there, there have been DC films that you probably don't take the kids to. No. Um, but this is not one of those. This is this is the one where the, the kids get to go and um, you know and, and have a kind of a silly fun time. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's let's real quick uh, before we wrap it up because obviously we're gonna it seems like we're gonna tell people that they they can go and see Blue Beetle and, and enjoy themselves uh, here as the summer is ending and school is getting ready to start in a lot of places. Um, why do we always have to? one and done villains um, it's, the, it's the biggest mistake uh in the history of because they, they don't do it in the comics no remotely as often as they do uh in movies um and i yes i think that that is a really bad trend um mm-hmm. and you know we i was critical of thor the last thor in that way oh. and you know, it's just there's a lot of wasted, really good villains that they, you know, that they they can't just be defeated. They have to completely. Yes, you know, be, they have to be gone. But even and, now, you know, it's like, well, we can bring them back from another dimension. But it's it's it, to a certain. But no, I mean, why do we have to kill off the villain? Why can't the villain sneak away? Right. Uh, and, and and let's be clear. I, I, I say back. that. That's kind of, okay. So, so minor spoiler there, but it's kind of be expected in a modern superhero movie. Um, I like Susan Sarandon's villain. I think she's just unapologetically evil. My ass just over the top, vicious. Yeah, it's, it's the kind of role that she obviously she just said, I'm gonna, you know, chew on as much sinew as I can mm. get and, and, and be as, you know, crazy mama as I can get, you know. Yeah. Um, so before we wrap it up real quick, let's talk about you said the the you compared it to Watchmen and I use that, too, because there's some design elements. Um, what year do you think this movie takes place? Well, I think it's contemporary. Well, but yeah, but is it contemporary now or is it contemporary but, 10 years from now? Because uh, because Palmyra City seems more advanced. Than Gotham or Metropolis or central city in any of the versions of the dc stuff that we've seen yeah well i think it, i mean at least some of the technology they're working with but right. uh i mean if you kind of work in cyborg and things it's not like it's it's not and and maybe part of the reason why it's that way is they weren't making it trying to fit right and and so yeah maybe there's going to be you know maybe that says something about but yeah the technology is it's 
you know, it's a, a little advanced, and yet there's a lot of 80s style to a lot of it, too. And, and they grabbed a bunch of music. Of, yeah, it's kind of a weird mix of, you know. Um, yeah. For me, it also kind of felt like Bumblebee. Yeah, I'll allow but that. without John Cena to get in the way. Right. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> anyway. Oh, John Cena. I don't hate I, I don't I don't hate John Cena. It, I just hate just everything not, he does. I just hate a lot of his appearances. Well he couldn't he couldn't come into this movie because he's peacemaker. Yeah. And that's a show I loathe beyond belief and a character I hate beyond belief. And of course it's James Gunn's, so it stays. Um yeah, but it does. It it's got a different visual. I mean, aside from the fact that it takes place in South 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 Florida, uh it it does have a different visual flavor than the other movies that have come before it. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays moving forward. If it moves forward again, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, it's an interesting, it's a, it's a film that's okay as a standalone, but yes, they can absolutely move forward with what they have. Um, it doesn't have to be a direct continuation. They can just take Jaime and move him forward you know, or, or whatever. There's a couple other things that they can move forward mm -hmm. that with that, that are interesting. So I, I think this is not the best superhero film ever. It is not the best DC <laughs> hero movie ever. And I hate, I'm really tired of that. That's what you see every time out of every critic or every marketing campaign for every superhero movie. When Aquaman wow. comes out, I promise you, someone's going to say it's the best DC movie ever. And they're full of shit. Um, yeah. and I'm really, I'm really tired of those hyperbolic reviews. This it's good. It's solid. Um, it's entertaining and it is family friendly. Um, there's, there's a couple, he doesn't like to kill people, No. which I found humorous at one point because somebody has no compunctions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's not the villain. Uh, yeah. which I, I, which I found funny. That, that is funny. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, um, but again, that character has a different mindset than I mean, he does. So, but I just, I, I just thought it was fun. That one particular aspect was funny. Uh, yeah. but no, he doesn't. So, it, but it, no, it's family friendly. Uh, it, it, it's, it's worth going to see in the theater and, and it's nice to be able to say that. It's a, it's an interest or it's an interesting it's a, it's a welcome change from some movies that we've talked about recently where it's like you don't need to see it in the theater you can if you want yeah. but you don't need this one it's big you can it's big it's bright it's it's fun and you know and even you know your eight nine year olds will enjoy a lot of it I think so yeah so uh, but yeah so that's that is in theaters now Blue Beetle um. And uh, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. So uh, we've we, we've got some other stuff we need to talk about. So we're going to cut this uh, and then we're going to talk about some other stuff that you'll hear in another episode. But until that happens, don't forget to like us, follow us on social media. You know how that works. Uh, be good. Stay safe. Go see a good movie in the theater because there are actually quite a few of them right now still in a the theater for you to go and see and enjoy. So until next time, I'm Mark. That's Ryan. Bye, Ryan. Uh, and we will talk to you all later.